Hello students, welcome to the third and last lecture on the fuel cell technology. Right, the fuel cell technology we have seen until now the basic virtue of the fuel cell. We also saw about the types of the fuel cells that can be used. We also saw the advantages and disadvantages of the fuel cell. And from then which fuel cell can generally be used in the electric vehicle that we also discussed. In the last we will also compare the fuel cell and the performance of the fuel cell and which of them can be used and are they used in the fuel cell will also be seen. So we saw four types of the fuel cells in the previous video. There are still two fuel cell types that is left which we will see here. The first one that is left is the molten carbonate fuel cell. Right Now as the name suggests in the molten carbonate fuel cell the electrolyte which is used is the molten metal carbonate right the co2 3 is required as the source here so any metal can be combined with the carbonate fuel cell here right as the electro electrocatalyst or the anode and the cathode for the anode the electrocatalyst used is the nickel chromium alloy and for the cathode the uh, metal used is the lithiated nickel oxide right so these two are the electrocatalysts that are used in case of the molten carbonate fuel cell in the case of the molten carbonate fuel cell you can see the little bit difference in the chemical reaction because of the co3 that is being will be generated in the combination with our uh, molten metal so s2 will combine with the co3 minus that is being released from our electrolyte which uses the H2O plus CO2 plus 2 electrons that is used with oxygen plus 2 CO2 plus 4 electron which again combines for the 2 CO3 so here the CO2 is overall recycled in this cycle so CO2 will not be liberated mostly but some of the CO2 will be liberated from the uh, anode side and that CO2 has to be recycled again in this case that was same in the case of the methanol type as well also there is a big disadvantage of this molten carbon fuel cell is the range of the temperature at which the fuel cell work which is from 600 to 700 degrees celsius so which is very higher temperature for the fuel cell operation and which is not feasible for our electric vehicle the only advantage it has is that the electrodes that or electrolytes that we are using or the electrocatalyst that we are using in this is non-noble metal which is not platinum so this is the only advantage of this type of fuel cell but because of the higher temperature it is not feasible for our vehicle next is the solid oxide fuel cell so according to the name all the things in this uh, cell or the fuel cell will be at the solid level right the electrolyte that will be used will be solid of the uh, metal oxide the stabilized metal oxide which is non porous will be used as the electrolyte and also an anode and cathode the electrocatalyst that will be used will also be solid and will also be non noble metal so it will be any other metal than the platinum in the case of the solid oxide fuel cell the operation or the uh, chemical reaction you can see that the H2O is combined with the two minus oxygen ions that gives us the H2O and two electrons and for the cathode the O2 gives the combination with the four electron which is being liberated from the hydrogen coming from our circuit and which gives us the two oxygen ions which combines with the hydrogen again so it is again the pure cyclic process and that cyclic process is done in this solid oxide fuel cell so in this fuel cell as you can see the procedure is similar but again the disadvantage in this fuel cell is the higher uh, working temperature the temperature at which the solid oxide fuel cell works is from 900 to 1000 degree celsius 
which is again not feasible for our electric vehicle. The only advantage of the solid oxide diesel is that it does not use non, uh, it does not use noble metal. It uses the metal except the platinum. So because of that, there is one advantage. But with the again higher temperature disadvantage, this type of the fuel cell is not again feasible for our electric vehicle. Here is the comparison of the types of the fuel cells that we saw until now. The first is the phosphoric acid fuel cell, second is the alkaline fuel cell. In the first you can see it is used or it can be used for the stationary applications only. So it cannot be used for the electric vehicle and the fuel for the phosphoric acid can be H2 deformated. Uh, H2 can be used from the LNG, the electrolyte is phosphoric acid. For the second alkaline type, the H2 used as fuel and the application is can be used as a mobile application as well. So it can be moved from one to another procedure as well. So it can be used in mobile. So it can be future school for our electric vehicle or hybrid vehicle as well. Third one is the proton exchange membrane fuel cell and that proton exchange membrane fuel cell is the best fuel cell that we can use right now for the electric vehicle and hybrid electric vehicle. Next is the direct methanol in which the fuel that we are using is the methanol and not the hydrogen. The electrolyte is the solid polymer. The operating temperature is from 90 to 100 degrees Celsius. It gives us the 30% efficiency, right? There is a difference in the efficiency of the direct methanol type which is compared to other efficiencies is because of the methanol that is used as a source and not the hydrogen that is used as the source of the vehicle. So it can also be used as the electric and hybrid electric vehicle and it is being used in that but only for the small portable devices. Next is the molten carbonate uh, fuel cell. Again, the working temperature is around 600 to 700 degrees. So it can only be used in the stationary applications. And the last one that is solid oxide fuel cell. That again can only be used for the stationary application because of the higher working temperature. Now you can see that both of the last two fuel cells gives us the highest efficiency compared to the other one because it operates as the higher temperatures and that heat can be utilized but because of the feasibility with our electric vehicle we cannot use those two fuel cells in our vehicle that is electric vehicle or any hybrid vehicle we cannot use it. Next is the basic fuel cell model that we can just look at it is just an empirical model which is not required to be understood in very much detail but this gives us the idea of the current and voltage which is being generated from the fuel cell and the different factors which are given the values of the different parameters are given in this fuel cell model so it is just for the brief knowledge or brief uh, idea for the model that is used for our one fuel cell Next is the hydrogen storage system. How the hydrogen is generally stored? Now normal liquid hydrogen if we want to store then we have to provide a cryogenic system to store the hydrogen because it has to be stored at a lower temperature. So because of that disadvantage we are generally storing the hydrogen as the compressed gaseous form. Now that compressed gaseous form has a very high pressure at around thousands of atmospheric pressures compared to the normal gas and that compressed gas it gets leaked can create a big accident problem. So here are two methods that can be used as the solution of that is that we will use the storage material such as it will absorb the hydrogen and whenever the hydrogen is required it will release the hydrogen in the gaseous form. So whenever we store the hydrogen in the system it will be stored at a lower compressed pressurized gas compared to the higher gaseous form. So two example is for metal hydrides. Any metal which is can be combined with the hydride can be used as the metal hydride tank. It gives us a good specific power as well. The only disadvantage is that the weight of the metal hydride tank will increase. But 
that way is being used as the vehicle weight and can be included with the vehicle weight and the uh, research is going on about it and the next one is the carbon nanotube the carbon nanotube is an interesting factor that is being researched right now and that carbon nanotube will also remove the disadvantage of the metal hydride which was that the weight is increasing but in case of the carbon nanotube weight will not increase so these are the two uh, basic storage system that can be used for the fuel cell last is the fuel cell based electric vehicle so here are the basic layout of the fuel cell vehicle in which first you can see the fuel will be supplied the fuel processor will be obtained from that H2 will be removed that H2 will be supplied to the fuel cell stack that fuel cell will be controlled with one controller from that the waste heat will be removed or either we can recycle it according to the requirement from that fuel cell stack the low voltage will be generated that low voltage will be amplified with the help of DC DC converter that DC to DC converter supplies the higher voltage to the power inverter now at the higher voltage line we will also connect the battery for the electric vehicle purpose because a long fuel cell cannot give us the power to run the vehicle so that power inverter gives the power to the electric motor and that electric motor finally gives the power to the drive line and this is how the power is generally supplied in case of the fuel cell and so until now we have almost seen all the factors that needs to be learned about the fuel cell right so from the next lecture we will see about the new chapter until then thank you so much Thank you.